parents were journalists uh, before I was born. Um, my father continued after I was born, but when uh, they first met, they were in grad school and then they ran a newspaper in Zambia. And when I was growing up, my family always watched the news over dinner and read the newspaper and we really made a big deal out of the news. It was important to us. For me, the things that I remember growing up were just my mother being very um, analytical about the way that issues like race were covered by the media and teaching me not just to get information from the media but get information about the media. So get information about how news organizations were covering important issues. Um, my first book, Don't Believe the Hype, was really an expression of some of the ways that I you know, learned growing up to be a critical analyst of race in the media. And then um, it, my book career is evolving, so I'm working on a book now about the labor market and employment. But I like to work on issues that are important to people, you know, that shape people's everyday lives, whether it's race, whether it's money, whether it's, you know, politics, even though, even though politics may seem a little remote, the way that I like to cover politics is by covering people affected by issues as opposed to only covering the politicians making the decisions. I think you have to cover the politicians, but you also have to cover the people. There's all sorts of people who I look up to as role models. Some of them are people who I know personally. Some of them are people who I may have met once or twice, and some of them are people that I've never met. So people that I know personally would include a lot of members of my family, you know, who in general my family is very much about giving back to the community, very much about education. My mother, for example, tutors kids. She's retired. Um, she tutors kids, she does urban farming, she's, you know, she does a lot of amazing stuff. Um, people who I've met include Nelson Mandela, you know, who obviously I admire very greatly and I felt very honored to meet him in his home several years ago in South Africa. And then people who I've never met, you know, there's all sorts of people um, in American history and global history who are inspirational, um, whether it's uh, you know, Rosa Parks, who's getting a lot of attention right now because there's a new biography out about her. She was not the meek seamstress that people thought. She was a really a lifelong warrior for justice. Um, and, you know, there's, there's any number of people who are historical figures who I also look up to. My biggest motivation to succeed in this field is to, is kind of twofold. One is to give people information that's useful, of course, but the other is to build a sense of community because I think that's important, particularly as we, as a country, are facing some very tough issues that won't go away anytime soon, whether it's budget issues or climate change. We need to feel like we're a part of something bigger than what we are mm -hmm. in order to really combat these problems. But I'm working on a nonfiction book about the labor market, and I'm working on a novel. And then just also, you know, trying to live a good life, be healthier, and enjoy my friends and family. Um, you know, that may sound ri simply ridiculous or ridiculously simple, but the reality is that nothing is promised, and you have to enjoy every day.